Mary, what are you doing with that knife? Knife? Well, this isn't a knife, Carl. It's a letter. Can't you see that it's a letter? You're just imagining things again. Put it down. Put Either it down, that or you're hear? trying to make me believe I'm imagining things. All I want to do is read it Keep to you. Keep away from me. Keep away. But I'm telling you, all I want to do is show it to you. Show it to you like... <laughs> Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest. And our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a moment in Murder Out of Mind. at Midnight, Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Sigmund Miller is Murder Out of Mind. Twelve o'clock, midnight, in the home of Carl and Mary Watson. Carl is sleeping, but sleeping restlessly, uneasily. And suddenly... Mary. Mary, what are you Mm. doing? What? Doing? Why, That knife. There in your hand. A knife? I I, I don't understand. What am I doing with a knife? My guess would be that you were about to kill me. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. Wait till I put on the light. Carl... Your throat, it, it, it's bleeding. It's a pretty sharp knife. Just the touch of it against my throat that woke me. I couldn't have done it. I couldn't. Then may I have it? I, I'll get you some iodine and a bandage. Never mind, it's only a scratch. But it's bleeding. It's all right. Why did you want to kill me? But I, I didn't want to kill you, Carl, darling. I don't know how the knife got in my hand. I was asleep. I, I don't remember getting it. I don't remember anything. You do believe me, don't you, Carl? You know I wouldn't hurt you I for anything. I do believe you, Mary, but... Why should I do such a thing? Possibly because you hate me and wish I was dead. What? Oh, but I don't, Carl. I love you. I always have. It's possible to hate someone and not even realize that you no, no. hate them subconsciously. You haven't been feeling too well lately, have you, Donna? Oh, only, only since George's accident, when he was killed. That could be the reason, you know. Because I lent your brother the car, you could hate me for that. No, that isn't so. It wasn't your fault. Of course it wasn't my fault. Your brother was reckless and foolhardy. Don't say that. You see? Carl, you think I'm going crazy? No, but I I think it might be a good idea for us to see a doctor. A doctor? A psychiatrist. Oh, no. I, I, I don't need a doctor. It won't happen again. I swear it won't. You can't tell, darling. It wasn't something you did deliberately. You, you might do it again still without knowing it. Next time you might succeed. I think we'd... <clears throat> we'd both feel safer if we did see a doctor. <laughs> tried to murder you in her sleep? Yes, Doctor. And she was asleep, really asleep. Well, ha- has there been any other manifestation of erratic behavior? Yes, lots of little things. She's abstracted, often hears things that aren't there, very forgetful. Well, the other day she forgot to make dinner for me. Hmm. Of course she was abject about it, but, but they all seem to point to an unconscious hostility toward me. Well, uh, let's call her in. Mrs. Watson, will you come in, please? Good morning, Dr. Heller. Good morning, Mrs. Watson. Has my husband told you? Uh, Yes, he did. Uh, Won't you sit down? Yes, thank you. Uh, Tell me, were you very much attached to your brother? Well, you see, I, I raised him since he was a baby. 
Our mother died soon after George was born. And there was a strong bond between the two of you then? Yes. But I'm sure it had nothing to do with last night. But I didn't say it did. I, I'm i merely gathering all the facts in the case. Facts? And, uh... What are the facts? I tried to kill my husband. Please, Mary. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, it's all so dreadful, God. <clears throat> Maybe I am crazy. I don't, I, know. I don't think you are. But you may be in need of treatment, Mrs. Watson. Have you been sleeping well lately? Yes. Well, have you had any nightmares or terrifying dreams? No, I don't dream at all. Or do you find yourself unusually upset when little things go wrong? No, not generally. Mary, put Dr. Heller's pen down. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You broke the point, jabbing it into the blotter that way. I didn't mean to. I wasn't thinking. Oh, that's all right. I'm, I'm very sorry. It's, it's just that, well, I've, I've been nervous ever since my brother was killed. That's understandable, Mrs. Watson. Can you come in to see me tomorrow? Uh, your husband won't have to come with you. Oh, yes, Doctor, if you want me to. You sure you don't want me to come with the Dr. Heller? I'm very much concerned. I'd uh, rather you didn't, Mr. Watson. You know best. Uh, this same time tomorrow, then. Yes. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Watson. Goodbye, Dr. Heller. Oh, Dr. Heller. Yes? What do you think? Well, I can't say right now. Um, this was just a superficial examination. She doesn't have any important outward symptoms or anything serious. Well, what but, about her uh, jabbing the pen into the blotter? Wasn't that significant? I mean, in a, in a minor way, wasn't she trying to stab me again? Ah, uh, you're being an amateur psychiatrist, and that's dangerous. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Watson. Goodbye, Dr. Heller. I'll let you know if anything unusual happens. Do you want another cup of coffee, Carl? No, darling. Why don't you go to bed? I'll do the dishes. No, I can do them. I feel fine. I'm, I'm not tired at all. Put the knife down, Mary. I was just going to cut some cake. Oh. I guess I'm just a little jumpy. You're afraid of me. Oh, don't put it that way. It's, well, it's just that... Well, we should be careful. Yes, Carl. I'll sleep in the living room tonight. Hmm. Well, uh, perhaps that would be best. Then... Someone's at the door. Why do you say that? Because the doorbell is ringing. What are you talking about? The bell, it's ringing. Easy, Mary, there's no bell ringing. But there is, I can hear it. All right, open the door and see for yourself. There must be someone there. There must be... There's no one. The bell stopped. As soon as you satisfied yourself that no one was at the door, the bell stopped. That is, your mind stopped ringing the imaginary bell. I don't know what to do. What shall I do, Carl? Well, Dr. Heller seemed to think he can help you. He must help me. He must... Mary! What? I didn't say anything. Didn't you just call my name? I didn't say anything. Mary! Someone's calling my name. Stop it, Mary. You mustn't let yourself go. Your imagination is running away with you. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. No, no, please Mary, stop it. Please Mary, stop it. Stop it, Carl. I can't do anything. It's you who's got to stop it. You have to force it out of your mind. Mary, 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 Mary. I keep hearing it. It's driving me crazy. Do something, Carl. Do something, anything. I'll call Dr. Heller. Mary, Mary, Mary. Dr. Heller, Carl Watson, can you come over right away? Yes, she's bad, very bad. Well, what do you think, Doctor? I gave her a sedative. She's resting quietly now. What do you think we ought to do? Oh, I'll be in a better position to tell you tomorrow, when I examine her thoroughly. I... I feel rather uncomfortable. She might try to kill me again. Mm. But I can't recommend institutionalizing her. I'm not convinced yet it's necessary. 
And it might be very harmful to her. But she might make the attempt again. Just watch her closely. By tomorrow, I'll know what should be done. All right. You're the doctor. It's a very unusual case. As far as I can see, there's no real mental illness. But then again, as I've said before, my examination has only been superficial. I'll see her in the morning. Uh, call me about noon and I'll let you know. Yes, Dr. Heller. And uh, just be on your toes for tonight. You have a good night's rest, Mary? Yes, dear. I slept very soundly after that stuff Dr. Heller gave me. Oh, that's wonderful. What's that you got there? Tomato juice. We're out of oranges. You mean you fixed breakfast? Oh, you shouldn't have. I wanted to. Here, Carl. Uh -huh. Thanks, darling. <clears throat> What's the matter? What? What did you put in this juice? What? Why, nothing. Just a dash of lemon. Lemon? Maybe, but something else, too. Iodine... Iodine. Why did you do it, Mary? But I didn't. I swear I didn't. I just poured the juice out of Come the on, can. Come on, let's look in the medicine chest. But, but Come on. please, Carl, please, you've got to believe me. I didn't do it. I just poured the juice out of the can, and the can was fresh. Here. Here's the iodine bottle. And it's just been used. See? It's on my fingers. And I haven't used it in weeks. I, I cut myself this morning. Where? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't understand, Carl. I, I don't remember even coming in here. I must be crazy. I must be really crazy. A pen stabbed into a blotter and poison for breakfast. Are these both repeat performances of that first attempt to commit... Murder at midnight. And now, back to Murder at Midnight and Murder Out of Mind. Irene, over here. Get in quickly. Anyone see you? No. I waited back where it was dark. Well, what's happening with Mary? Won't be long now, darling. Carl, you've said that a dozen times before. This time I mean it. She's really starting to go. How do you know? I just do. She's naturally high, strung, and nervous, and I'm making the most of it. Another few days and she'll be so bad that I can have her institutionalized and keep her there for life. For life? Not getting squeamish, are you? No, but... Well, that's just a little too much for me. Stop that. It's the only way. She'll never give me a divorce, you know that. Oh, I know, I know. This driving her mad. I'd almost rather you killed her. What? Well, at least that would be quick. This will be quick, too, from here on in. You just leave everything to me. What happened to Dr. Heller's, Mary? He asked me a lot of questions for over an hour. What did he say? He said I seemed to be all right. He, he wants to see me again tomorrow. Did you tell him about the iodine? Yes. What did he say about that? He tried to make me remember it, but I couldn't. I just couldn't remember doing anything like that, Carl. I spoke to him a little while ago, called him after you left. What did he tell you? He thought perhaps you needed a rest. But I am resting. I'm not doing much work. You need a rest at a rest home. What kind of home? There are nice, quiet, private places where you'll be very comfortable. After all, you'll probably only have to be there for a short time. No, no, I won't. I won't go to an institution. Ah, you mustn't get yourself upset about it. Dr. Heller didn't tell me that. Naturally not. I won't. I won't go, Mary, Carl. something must be done about you. You're ill. Seriously <laughs> ill. 
Twice in two days you try to kill me. I know. You hear things that aren't there. You've completely lost control of yourself. <laughs> if you don't have the proper care, you may get worse. You may become stark, staring mad. No, no, don't say that. Look at you. You can't keep your eyes steady. They dart around I, like a bird. I, I can. I keep them steady. Look at me. I am. You're not looking. You've dropped your eyes. You can't look at me because you feel guilty. You hate me. You want to kill no, me. No, no, I don't hate you at all, Carl. I love you. I really do. I, I'll be all right. I know I will. You're getting worse. You keep forgetting things. I don't forget. I, What's today's date? I, it, you see, you can't remember the date. How many days in this month? Uh, 30 days after September, April, June, and November. You see, your mind goes back to your childhood. That's what happens with people who are mentally ill. You can't even remember what month this is. What is the month? I know. If you'll only let me think. You don't have to think to know what month this <laughs> no, is. It's August. No. Your mind is closing up. You're losing contact with the world outside. Soon you won't even know whether it's winter or summer or whether it's day or night. You need treatment. You need hospital care right now. The thing is, will you take it now or do you prefer to wait until you're hopelessly insane? <laughs> Yes, darling. How's everything going? Very well. When can you come to see me? I can't, not until Mary is put away. How's she getting on? Fine, fine. Another few days and it'll be all over. She's in constant hysterics now. One word from me and she breaks down completely. What about the doctor? He's puzzled. You mean suspicious? Oh, everything's going to be all right. Now, look, darling, I won't be able to call you anymore, but I'll write you every day. Remember... It won't be long now. Please don't wash the dishes, Mary. I want to, Carl. I've got to do something. Look, you can't even hold a dish in your hands. Watch out! It, it slipped. Yes, so it did. No. It slipped because your fingers are getting nerveless. Carl, I'm, I'm fine when you aren't around. Perhaps, perhaps it's because you hate me. When you see me, your mind just closes up. You go completely to pieces. What do you want me to do? I've made some inquiries about the Chilton home. Hmm? It's a very fine place in a lovely part of the state. You, you won't mind being there for a few months? A few months? Yes, it might take half a year. I thought... What did you think? Well, tell me what you thought. I, I can't remember. Yes, I know you can't remember. It's hard for you to remember. It gets harder and harder every day. But I'm fine with Dr. Heller. I remember everything with him. He's a psychiatrist. He knows how to help you. Well, there are dozens of psychiatrists at Chilton. Dr. Heller never said anything about my going to a sanitarium. I've had long discussions with Dr. Heller Don't... about you. Now, believe me, this is the best course. If, if you really think so, if you want me to go, Carl, all right, I will. Who's that? It's me, Mary. Can I come in, Carl? I'm just finishing a letter, dear, to uh, Chilton. I'll be right out. just felt lonely. I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's all right, Mary. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm just going to mail this. I'll mail it for No, you. I don't want you to leave the house anymore. Not alone. It's not safe for you. Who's there? Mailman. Oh, just a moment, please. Letter yes. for you, Mrs. Watson. Oh, a return for lack of postage. No stamp on it. Well, if you wait a minute, I'll get you three cents. No, no, can't do that. You'll, you'll have to remail it. Oh, I see. Thank you. To Irene Craig. Who's Irene Craig? Irene Craig. Irene Craig. 
Dearest Irene, I've done it at last. Mary is committing herself voluntarily to an asylum. Once she's there, I'll be able to keep her there for as long as I want. Today I frightened her so that she forgot her own name. Just a few more days and she'll be a raving lunatic. Have patience, darling Irene, just a few days longer. Love, Carl. Love, Carl. She forgot her own name. <laughs> My name is Mary. It's Mary, 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 M-A-R-Y. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with me. I'm sane, completely sane. My name is Sane, S-A-N-E, Mary Sane. <laughs> I tried to kill him, Carl said. That's what he said. I tried to kill him twice. He said I hated him. And all the time, he hated me. He hated me. It's Irene he loves. Irene, whom I don't even know. Maybe she has a better memory than I have. Maybe she knows what today's date is. Maybe she knows what time it is. Maybe she doesn't forget her name. It's Irene. I won't forget her name either. It's Irene, Irene, Irene. I won't forget anything anymore. I'll remember everything. I must tell Carl and show him how much I can remember. I must bring him something to show how good my memory is. Mm. He'll appreciate this. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. He'll appreciate this. Carl? Oh, Carl, dear. What is it, Mary? Who was that at the door? What are you doing with that knife? Knife? This isn't a knife. So your imagination, it's really a letter, a letter to Irene Mary, that's in my hand. That knife down, Mary. But it isn't a knife, it's a letter. Can't you see it? It has your signature on it. Love, Carl, it says. Letter? How do you know about the letter? It came back without a stamp. What? You just imagined it. There is no Irene. Now put that knife down. You know it isn't a knife, Carl. You're just making believe. That gleam is only the gleam of my tears. But it is sharp. When I read it, it stabbed me. Keep away from me, Mary. Dr. Heller said I was perfectly sane. He asked me a lot of questions about no, you. Yes, you, yes, you. He thought there was something the matter with you more than Stop, with Mary. me. He caught on to you fast, Mary, he did. Remember what you told me, Mary. Carl. You told me that soon I wouldn't know whether it was winter or summer outside, but you made a mistake. It was you who won't know about the weather. Mary. You won't care. You'll Please, be satisfied Mary. with just this letter Mary. close in your heart. No. I hate you. I hate you the way you hated me. Love, Carl. You see? I can look straight in your eye now. I can. But you can't look in mine anymore. <laughs> So the pattern is played out, and the knife that Carl Watson first placed in his sleeping wife's hand ended up in his own heart. You see, we always try to give you poetic justice, along with... Murder! At midnight!
remember to be with us again when death steals into a tortured mind and the clocks strike 12 for murder at midnight. Our stars tonight were Charlotte Holland and Alan Hewitt. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leder. Mm-hmm.